instruction. And today, our stressless program, we're going to talk specifically about reminiscing um, as a stress management tool for ourselves, but also how we can use this reminiscing or reminiscing therapy for our loved ones. We'll briefly talk about that at the end. Um, but really going to be able to talk about it in an experience for a little bit, how it really can work to lessen our stress, but elevate our mood and our well-being and everything. And saying that, I will be asking questions. We're actually going to do some reminiscing. Um, so if you want to unmute yourself or put in chat some questions I ask her as we get to the reminiscing part, just feel free to engage as much as you want to as we do that. So. But reminiscence, it's really a story that we tell about past events, moments, um, maybe people in our lives that left a mark. Um, most of the time they're enjoyable. Um, and it's a recollection of just these past things. It could be an object or even a smell um, that triggered, oh, I remember this and how it made me feel. Um, and the emotions that it brings um, and just remembering those good times or good moments. And a lot of it's about sharing your thoughts and your feelings about these experiences um, as you rec um, recall and reflect on your own life and the events that you have and how these moments and people and events um, really did shape you um, and shape who you are. When we're doing reminiscing, it's you can you just talk about it really you don't have to have a photo or an object it could just be questions that you have and really we kind of do this a lot more often than we think um, when when something does trigger it and you're like oh I remember that or that reminds me of this one time that we went down you know and then you got into the story about an experience that you had and you're able to share that with somebody because you can do it by looking through old photos um, looking at objects, familiar objects or um, objects from our past too. So studies have shown that reminiscing um, time, it says interviews, but when we reminisce, um, it reduces depression and anxiety. That's one of the most number one things that it can do is reduce that depression. Um, it also really encourages socialization and a sense of belonging because you are sharing yourself with others and they're sharing themselves with you. So there's this um, shared camaraderie that you can um, have with somebody or a small group as you're reminiscing. So it can reduce this isolation and loneliness, um, which is a, a, an issue, it's even more of an issue now because of the pandemic, but just doing this reminiscing can really help with that. It improves our coping skills. Um, our self-esteem, our overall life satisfaction, because it is kind of like a life review at times. Um, you can use it as a life review to somebody that's kind of experienced and walking through your life, um, but it's really taking stock of your past and celebrating your achievements and, and reliving those enjoyable times. Again, increases quality of life. Um, but really that self-worth and self-identity also, because you again, you're sharing your thoughts about your experiences and feelings about your experiences. It really can help maintain and improve cognitive functioning. Reminiscence therapy is used a lot for individuals with dementia. It's mainly used for those um, people because it helps reinforce memories or help us maybe recall some memories. Um, I might be buried or something. And it, it, it involves every area of our brain. So it does help with that stimulation and that cognitive exercise that we all need. Because um, you're not just remembering something necessarily. It brings in what did you feel, how it made you feel. Um, were you, was it a particular smell? Who was there? What was going on? And um, what could you see? What could you feel? So it's incorporating a lot of areas of your brain. So it's really great for just mental stimulation. Again, really great for our socialization as well, but also that emotional um, stimulation too. It makes connections with others. It leads to better relationships, interpersonal relationships. Um, we find a common ground. Sometimes it creates more mutual respect for somebody um, and maybe even just a better understanding of another person. And again, it fosters feelings of belonging. So I want to show us a series of pictures um, and start with right here. 
So just looking at the pictures on the screen here, what does anything come up for you guys um, about looking at any of these pictures, those old rotary phones? I know particularly with that, I, I am familiar with the rotary phone and grandparents have had some, but even now I know that sometimes they're using them, I guess not to play tricks on the kids now, but just to see how they react, put a rotary phone in front of them and see how long it takes a kid to figure out how to make a phone call. Um, so there's two separate memories I kind of have about those, but does anybody want to share about any, anything that pops up for the pictures on the screen here? I think for me, the microwave, um, I think, is that a microwave? I, no, maybe it's a TV. It it's looks a TV. Like, it's a TV. Yeah. Well, pretend it's a microwave. Yeah, it's a microwave, all right. <laughs> because my uh, reminisce is my mom. And when I was a teenager, early teenager, so when I first saw this, I thought being a teenager, because it all looks kind of like that vintage for me. And I was thinking this was a microwave. So if you'll go with me. Being that age, I recall my mother being so opposed to a microwave. It was like, I don't know how long it took to finally, and then of course she wouldn't give it up. So that that is something we have laughed about over the years. Every time we'd see her use it, we'd kind of kid her. And since she, her death, we will come back to the microwave. Do you remember when? It's a wonderful memory. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. I think all of these pictures bring back memories for me because that was sort of the period I grew up in. I remember looking at the 1960s fashion and all that, but la last night there was an Andy Williams special on as part of the KERA fundraising thing. And these dresses remind me of some of the dresses that were of course much shorter and flouncier that were on the Andy Williams show last night. But I can remember having green shifts that would kind of, you know, that were shorter and flounced and then those little Peter Pan collars and all I remember too. But the rotary phone, a friend of mine was just, and I were just talking about it recently because I actually still remember, we not only did we have the rotary phone, but we had the uh, party line. So you had to share your line with, a, with some other people. I, we only had to share with one other person. I think it was a two party line. And then finally Boyd and I didn't share a lot of, places that we like to go together um, but he was a big country music fan I was not but in our later years and I'm thankful now when I see this poster of how I'm really thankful for what we did because there was a local show that y'all may or may not be familiar with it was the Arlington Theater and it was the Johnny High Country Review and and boy was a place that a person who liked to go a lot of places but he loved to go to the to the johnny high country music review and so i started going with him and i thought i am so thankful that we that we got to spend those last couple or three years you know doing those kind of things together but that's the first thing i thought about when i saw that poster and remembering those folks on that poster are the re reflect the kind of music they sang at the Country Music Review. It wasn't the new stuff; it was the old stuff with, you know, Charlie Pry and that. I can't I can't read those names. I don't know if Furlan Husky's on there or not. Loretta Lynn and all. That. Anyway, so yeah, they're very good. And the last thing I'll say, I'm just talking too much, but the the price of the six commonly used items. I still remember how angry I was when a. Uh, when gas went up from 25 cents a gallon because I drove to and from college and I was I was counting on my gasoline being 25 cents a gallon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the prices are quite different now, aren't they? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing that. That was great. Deborah, I think you're on, or you're on mute if you're trying to share. Yeah. Um, and I was going to say for the gasoline price, fast forward to the 1970s, um, and there were gas wars, and it was 24, 25 cents a gallon again. <laughs> Too late for the college, but, you know, it varied back and forth in those decades. Wars. Well, well, let me skip on. So, kind of speaking of the 1970s, what about this screen? I mean, pictures um, on the screen there. Thing for you guys. Well, seeing the um, camera there, what does that say? Super, I'm trying to read it. Super, what is the Polaroid? Polaroid. 
Yeah, it's a Polaroid. Mm -hmm. And my husband um, just, that was probably right about the time, maybe a little later, as an artist, he began taking a lot of Polaroids. And I thought this was so odd. Why does he take so many of these? And um, then he really complained, of course, you know, Polaroid went out of business. So um, what he did in his later years, it's some of the most beautiful work he created. He did collages and he would take Polaroids of those collages and they would, everyone would be different. Everyone, everyone, pieces of paper. I don't know if I, you can envision it, but then in his later years, he had all those stored up. And then somewhere about 15 years ago, he began making small pieces out of those Polaroids. I have one right behind me. They are exquisite. And I can remember, and we've given a couple as gifts. They, they are just exquisite, but this Polaroid camera and his complaining <laughs> when it went out of business. And of course they came back in business, but by that time it was, we bought him the camera and he never really picked it up. Uh, but uh, lots of beautiful work came out of his Polaroid camera over the years. And it's a wonderful memory. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just need to ask a quick question. Is that okay? Is it, was that was Kathleen speaking? Is that Jack Willis's wife? Are you Jack yes. Willis's wife? Yes. I want to tell you after you shared something of a few weeks ago, I realized I, a memory came back then just because of your sharing of seeing his work in a gallery that my, my friend and I were looking for Western art. And I, I thought, oh my gosh, that must be the same Jack Willis. And because he, he did Western art, right? Um, no, he really... Um, well, maybe Western's not the right word. Landscape cut. Landscape, yeah. Landscape type, I, I, I associate those landscapes. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to say no, no, hi I, and how much I appreciated his work. Okay. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. Wonderful. Visit his website. <laughs> yeah, so. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. Right. And, and I will just add one more thing. I'm kind of embarrassed because that, that little kind of boom box type thing in the bottom left-hand corner, I think I have it sitting in my bedroom. I love and, it. And I really, I really should get rid of it if it's that old. Okay. Hey, it still works. Yeah, it still works. I love and I love hearing the, you know, this reminiscing and just kind of snowballs essentially. You know, I remember this, and you know, you're being able to share thank you for the work and it just keeps going down these paths um, that are unexpected, right? But they're good paths. Mm -hmm. Let me flip forward a little bit. Um, what about here? Anything on this page that triggers a memory or, or anything for you all? The Sony Walkman. We used those to exercise with. My husband and I both did. Okay. It was very, very updated and different you know kind of technology for that for that day and small and for those days not now <laughs> yeah. sure wish i had all of my original my brother and i had all of those star wars little action figures from when the first movies came out but we played with them in the dirt you know we were we played with them outside but wow that'd be nice to have those now in the package right well I know the Ferrari just I mean it reminds me of Magnum PI um, and I, you know, that was one of my brothers. My brother's a little bit older, one of his favorite shows. Yeah. I idolize Magnum P.I. So I do remember that. And, and then, of course, leads me to Tom Selleck and how much I like Tom Selleck and all the other shows he's in. And, you know, just can go from there, right? <laughs> yeah. By the way, a commercial, I think it's, well, it's this week anyway. Uh, Blue Bloods, starring Tom Selleck, starts this new season. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, and Star Wars has um, 
I mean, they've, I guess they've continued to always make money um, in new movies and all that, but they have their new show, The Mandalorian on, you know, which now, like my niece and nephew that are really young, they're kind of growing up with Star Wars too, which their parents grew up with, right? So they're mm-hmm. shared with them. But our son, I don't know, several of the Star Wars movies, I can remember standing in line and I would say to him, only because I love you so much are we <laughs> on the slide for this long. <laughs> but yeah, that was, that was big. All right, what about this screen? Anything on this screen stand out to y'all? The the kitchen phone on the wall. That's how we communicated with everybody in our life in those days. And uh, it's kind of how my husband and I got to really got to know one another. Long, long talks on the telephone. And with those long, long cords so you could continue to cook and do things while you were talking. (laughs) I love that. Like most phones must have stretched 15, 18 feet probably. Yeah. And the film, of course, lots of Lots of pictures taken and a lot of good memories left in those pictures. I remember being so like not having a a lot of patience to wait for the film to come back. And you got that, you know, from Eckerd's or whatever, the drugstore, and you get all those photos back and how excited you were. And when the photo didn't turn out. And I love seeing like that really that computer there, I guess, small computer, but now look at us. I mean, we're doing this through the computers, how far it's come. Yeah. Jamie, are these supposed to be in any kind of date order? Kind of. I kind of did them by decades as best I could. Yeah, so I, was, of- yeah I was surprised because they, I, I associate that viewfinder with a I guess that's what that is with my childhood. And that seems to be in a much later period. I mean, because the baseball card, I mean, the football card says 1990. And I thought, oh, that's odd. <laughs> right. Um, and the viewfinder might have been around for a long time. I, don't know. Yeah. I remember having the viewfinder as a kid. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so now what about this screen? <laughs> pictures here heard a chuckle or two Flip remember phones. those oh wheeling shoes our kids were all probably seven eight and nine and just insisted on getting those wheelies and um, they were kind of expensive and I remember we went to that um, Trader's Village in Grand Prairie and so I think most of the stuff there is uh, stuff that's kind of brought up from Mexico. And, and so they had those wheelie shoes for $10 a pair. And we had told the kids they could each get them because we knew they weren't going to wear them very long because they couldn't be comfortable because they had wheels in them. And sure enough, they wore them for about two days and that was the end of them. Uh, but also as a teacher, I remember the wheelie shoes because that's a disaster to have kids skating around the halls of a school. Oh, yeah. Poor Blockbuster is not in business anymore, but they sure did have a good, nice long run, didn't they? Yeah. <laughs> so when I used to play Minesweeper for hours. Is that what I that- bought a um, game? Yeah, that's what that, that game is. Um, I bought a game this weekend, a board game called Blockbuster, and it looks just like the blockbuster case like the vcr case um, and it's a movie trivia game i bought it for a couple of friends of ours oh that's fun well what is that thing on the left hand the bottom left corner what is it 
Uh, isn't that an iPod? Yeah, the first iPod. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So it was a lot bigger than the ones that got really, really popular then. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I don't remember that one. Do you remember the flip phone now? Oh, yeah. And having to type, or when you're texting A A C B C. A A A B B B B. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, and just a couple of questions. You don't always have to have pictures, but um, who was your best friend in grade school? Or what was your most favorite subject? What was your favorite subject? Who was your favorite teacher? What was your favorite uh, field trip? Was there a dress code at your school or things that you couldn't wear at school? Did you have a class pet? You know, you back to the dress code, we had, you know, your skirt, if you kneel, your skirt had a certain number of inches that, you know, had to be between it and the floor because many skirts were in style. And, um, I made most all of my clothes in those days. And so I knew that they were just exactly right or maybe an inch into that, you know, that space that they could be. But I still got sent to the office several times, and, you know, <laughs> over, over a dress code violation, but it wasn't. I'd get down there and they would measure and it was well within the, um, the measurement, you know. And we could, we had to wear dresses. So I say it was literally a dress code, wasn't it? You had to wear yeah. dresses, right? Yeah. My mom tells stories about not only the skirt, but the hair, because she was a teenager in the 60s with the beehive. And their hair could only be so tall. They would also measure how tall their hair was. <laughs> so it was how short the skirt and how tall the hair. That's funny. Huh. So how do you feel or what did you, um, what has happened since we've been doing this reminiscing? Do you feel any different than you did before we started? Yes, I feel a lot older. Oh. <laughs> it didn't, didn't intend to have that effect, did it? <laughs> No, but that's fine. <laughs> I'd say happy. It's fun to look through the decades and remember the, you know, some of the highlights and, and lowlights maybe of the decades, you know. <laughs> yeah, can you believe we did that or we wore that? Right. <laughs> or you had to measure the hair. I didn't know that. Um, yes, uh, yeah, we're hoping I think it's still. fun. Go ahead. My, I'm sorry, my internet connection is terrible. It, it keeps popping up. But I was thinking, you know, we bought our three-year-old grandbaby a Viewmaster uh, with the Disney princesses in it. Um, and yeah. I had one. And many of us on here were talking about having them. The Rubik's Cubes are in the stores again. Their light mm -hmm. rights are in the stores again. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, did we notice that any items brought forth, you know, there were special stories that you told and there was times of your life, maybe special moments that you shared. Um, and then again, it started to kind of trigger something else. And I remember mm -hmm. then, um, I mean, there could be hours of stories shared between you know, people and share your, your experiences. You're not a right or wrong and your feelings for that. Um, for sure. But did you also notice that all of your senses were involved when you were remembering or many areas of your brain? Because we had to use, and it wasn't just one a file, um, cat, or that file that came out that I remember this one instance. 
I mean, we had to remember the people that were involved, how it made me feel, what was the environment at the time, you know, where was I at my, in my time of life during all that. Um, so it is, it's, it's great for brain exercising <laughs> to those cognitive fitness um, to do this reminiscing, but as well as just the emotional benefit that you get out of it um, and being able to socialize even online. And, you know, this, when we're not in person, it's great when you're in person, but being able to do it over Zoom or even over the phone, you don't have to have pictures, just asking those questions um, of your loved one or people you want to get to know better too hearing their stories. So real quick, um, just an interest of time, I want to briefly talk about how to do reminiscing with somebody with dementia. Uh, and a question came up, what are suggestions for handling unpleasant memories that might come up with reminiscing as well? So again, it is important, the benefits of doing reminiscence for us, you know, our personal benefit, but for those with dementia, because they can connect. Um, in a different way, you know, we're matching what they are able to do, their abilities, and they can connect to reminiscing and bond with their care partner or whomever they're talking to. They can recapture forgotten memories. Um, they're sharing themselves with you, their experiences, their interactions, and it provides a sense of belonging and value to them. But again, not all items will evoke a positive memory. Um, and that's okay. If there's a sad feeling or express or something that was upsetting, that's okay to have that because you might have had a couple of those too um, that you might not have shared or you're like, oh, I remember that. Or, you know, that happened with, you know, my uncle and now he's passed away and how sad, you know, because it can lead you down to something that's more sad um, or unpleasant. But that's okay. We want to acknowledge that and validate that feeling allow time for, for them to share those feelings too, for them to be able to process that and just listen to them. Um, but also know how easy um, or the skill that it takes to, well, let's look at this next picture, right? Let's go or look at this next object or ask another question. Because we want to, I mean, all feelings that we have are human feelings and we want to experience those. But then maybe we go on to another one. Um, you know, if it leads to now, well, now, you know, my uncle's passed away and make sure to miss him and it's just and it is really sad but remember the good times we had with them. Um, also knowing that they may remember one day but maybe not the next um, and it could also be the time of the day they're in they might be able to interact or engage a little bit better than another time of the day a lot of it's just going with the flow and with somebody with dementia it is a little bit easier for them to have a visual but if we don't have the visual the questions are, are gonna work just as well. But the, the um, so if you have an object, they can touch it, they can feel it, they can see it. Um, we have a tactile stimulation for them. And invite others to join if you can, uh, if it's appropriate. And then just enjoy each other. And to use for persons with dementia to maybe not use the word remember, because we use that a lot. And, I don't, and when we're reminiscing, I don't know that's a bad thing but a better way to ask the questions of them. You remember this person in the picture, um, but it's like, hey, this looks like Aunt Jo. That's, and it may be and it may not, but it's, it's not saying you remember who this is and like you're quizzing them, but this looks like Aunt Jo, right? And they live in Kansas, don't they? Isn't that where they grew up? And you can kind of ask questions that way to get them talking instead of feel like we're quiz quizzing them. Um, or if there's an object in there, ooh, that's a nice car. Did you ever get to ride in a car like this? You know, I can see pictures of my grandfather next to his cars all the time. They're always standing in front of their cars, you know, and asking about the car, that's a nice car. Um, did you work on cars? You know, just kind of getting that conversation started. Can you show me how this works? Uh, if it's an object, or you can just say, hey, look at this, this is interesting. Can you tell me more about this? And these are just better, uh, different ways to ask the question than saying, you remember this, right? because they may not, um, and that's okay. So if you are doing the journal, keeping up with the journal, the prompt this week is what are your goals? Um, I wanna say, what are your caregiving goals? But it can just be, what are your goals for the holidays? What are your goals for this week? What are, you know, it can be a larger goal. What are your goals to um, start implementing some of these stress management techniques into your daily routine? But narrow it down to one area, one subject, and talk about what are my goals and why? Why are they my, go my goals? And how 
what are small goals I can get there to get to these bigger goals? And what am I telling myself about these goals? That positive self-talk we've, um, we've shared before. Well, I appreciate all of your um, engagement and sharing your stories and reminiscing with us. Um, I will send out the slides, the recording and information on our upcoming programs. And unless there are any other questions or somebody wants to share something else, then we will see y'all next time. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. Thank y'all. Thank you. Mm -hmm.